Oh, well, I've, I've got a couple of announcements, I guess. Uh, this is Mark Esplin. I'm on, on the steering committee for the data cores. Um, uh, this has been the second in a series of the, three uh, webinars um, this fall. Um, the next one is September 24th. Sudeshna Das is, is presenting that. It's at 1 o'clock Eastern time. So if you haven't registered for that uh, and it sounds interesting to you, please do and please help us advertise these. Um, uh, Nicholas uh, in July had a wonderful set of attendance and like we've got 31 participants already here. Um, a couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, the data core leaders um, should have received, I think today, um, a ballot um, for the election of uh, the next steering committee member to replace Rick Chappelle. Uh, Rick has uh, donated three years of exceptional service to us and uh, you might uh, correspond with your data core leaders uh, and, and make sure that we get uh, the votes in on that. And then uh, I want to promote um, the analytics uh, workshop that we're having. This is on the Thursday afternoon prior to the um, Prior to the uh, fall meetings, um, it's hosted by Wash U in St. Louis, and uh, it looks like an exciting agenda. We'll also have a business meeting as part of that to talk through uh, our organization a little bit. Um, so if you can, uh, make plans to come into St. Louis a little bit early um, so you can attend that, that analytics workshop. Um, with that, um, just want to turn it back over to Kevin, and, and thank you so much, Kevin and, and Nicholas, for doing this. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate um, your efforts to organize this. Uh, I want to thank um, the NAC for doing the hosting and all the coordination and legwork to um, pull this together. Uh, you know, I think since since we were a center that was awarded uh, the ADRC in Florida, a uh, center that was awarded in 2015, uh, every time I would go to kind of the fall data session, uh, data course session, there was always a group of us talking about, you know, what are you doing at your center, and this is what we're doing, and this is how we do this, and um, it just seems like a lot of, of opportunity to talk about um, just what everybody's doing. And so uh, out of that conversation and conversations with Mark, um, you know, this kind of this webinar, this apps and tools kind of call uh, has come about, and I think it's a, a great outlet for all of the centers to kind of build a community around our activities uh, and, and, you know, look for opportunities to collaborate further. So again, thank you to everyone. Um, so let me go into presentation mode and start from here. Um, so the talking points for my presentation today is uh, we'll do introductions. Um, we'll talk about the business case uh, for our situation for Vernaculator, uh, how it came about. I'll talk a, a, quite a bit about the software itself, um, you know, features, how it's used, and then I'll spend uh, some more time talking about collaboration and how that's achieved. There are chat and question and answer features in Zoom. Um, I will be checking that periodically, but most likely uh, at the end of the presentation, I'll look at the chat box and uh, go back and try to, uh, and the question and answer box and try to address any questions you have um, as we move along. So that's, that's the order of the day. Uh, so I'm Kevin Hansen. Um, I uh, am a data manager or for the One Florida Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. Uh, our center is, uh, um, is multi-site. Um, we have a lot of uh, researchers and activity. We have like our NeuroPath core is at the University of Florida in Gainesville. Our clinical site is out at uh, Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami, Florida, Miami Beach, Florida. Um, we have collaborators at FIU, FAU, uh, for some of our outreach core activities, uh, the administration cores here at the uh, University of Florida. So uh, I make uh, you know, regular trips to Mount Sinai uh, to um, help with clinical core activities, you know, perform audits, um, you know, train new students, new staff on uh, REDCap because we use REDCap for electronic data capture. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, every week we have weekly calls with our clinical site, uh, you know, addressing um, data quality issues uh, as we're trying to clear cases into NAC. Um, so that's, that's who I am in my role in, in all of this. Nicholas? Um, yeah, hi. So um, for those who joined us a couple weeks ago, you already know a little bit about me, but for those who are new, um, I'm Nicholas May. 
Uh, I'm the database specialist at the Michigan ADRC. Um, and my role in this is, um, you know, uh, you know, working with uh, Kevin and One Florida ADRC um, to implement Naculator at our site because I happen to read and write enough Python to be able to create custom workflows around Naculator to meet our center's needs. Um, beyond uh, my role in uh, using Naculator, I help uh, manage our center's data and uh, responsible for validating, validating collected data, integrating all primary data sets, um, you know, where it's appropriate. Uh, and also pushing our center's um, NAC UDS data uh, to the national database, uh, which is, of course, why I use NACulator a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's been uh, a great collaboration. Uh, I'll talk, Nicholas and I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a few moments. Uh, just thank you, Nicholas, for joining today and agreeing to uh, co, uh, co uh, lead this with me. Yeah, thanks. So let's first talk about the, the business case. Um, again, as I alluded to earlier, uh, in 2015, we were a, a new center, a newly awarded center. Um, so we had, we had never, you know, worked with uh, the NAC data system before. We weren't quite familiar with it. I, uh, I, I think the first time I, um, I started reading about it was when I was going to the uh, the Alzheimer's um, uh, the NACS website. Then I went to the fall uh, ADC meeting in uh, what was it Chicago at the time. Met with Dwayne Beakley and we talked about the data system some more from what I had read on the NAC website. And you know we were trying to figure out how do we um, format and export and send data on a regular basis that's repeatable. And so. Um, you know, in this case, Max data system uh, uh, does a, a fixed length, you know, so in this case, the requirement is that, you know, uh, the data comes to them in specific columns or positions. Uh, and that's all found in the data element dictionary that, that I would think most of us have come to know uh, quite well. Um, then there's, uh, uh, you know, a, a need to have rules um, um, that are, you know, that are, are uh, applied, you know, reliably, uh, basically. So there are, in the data element dictionary, we find a number of, of rules about what's allowed and what's not allowed. And then there is the, uh, the part about um, data quality checks and form errors and uh, form alerts that we're aware of in the NAC data system. So we were trying to solve this, you know, issue about how do we interact with this system, how do we upload our data to it and, and pull it out of, um, pull it out of our recap. So um, one of the ways that, uh, you know, you can send data to NAC, obviously you can use the NAC's uh, web entry system um, to just enter the data straight, straight from um, whatever process you're using, uh, you know, like a paper process, whatnot at the clinical site. Uh, there's the option for uh, SAS uh, to uh, be used, SAS code to use to, to format and look for errors and, you know, clean and filter. Um, and then the third option is to write, you know, custom software. So um, I lead a, uh, I'm an associate uh, assistant director for a, um, uh, a software development and data analysis data management group uh, under our CTSI uh, here at the University of Florida. And so, um, we are used to providing data cleaning services and writing software to solve various, you know, uh, data problems and, uh, you know, cleaning data and, and uh, providing those services to our, our, our campus. So um, writing software kind of fit into our, our wheelhouse a little bit better. So that's the route that we chose. So in this case, um, writing software, uh, it's, it's not like any other options don't provide this, but uh, for us, we knew that with, with writing a custom software, we could automate most of the data transfer process to NAC. Uh, we could do pre-checks of the data uh, issues prior to upload, again, trying to uh, transform and clean the data. Um, we could schedule the data export and upload, and um, the software could be modifiable as changes happen. So. I speak to this in two seconds, but uh, in another slide, but you know, as new iterations of the UDS come out as uh, changes in rules like Z1X, you know, is now the, um, 
form to use as of April 2018. You know, no more Z1s. You know, this kind of transitions. We can modify the software to uh, to acquiesce to that. Um, you can say it's challenges, opportunities, kind of thing. But um, like I said before, there are well-defined variable uh, definitions from the Data Element Dictionary, which is really uh, a credit to NAC and a blessing because um, having <laughs> Having open fields where anything can be typed in is, you know, um, as, as anyone that works with data knows how much of a challenge that is. And so NAC's done a wonderful job to provide a very well-defined variable definitions in their uh, data element dictionary. And so implementing that in software is very achievable, uh, but it's still quite a bit of work to implement all, all of those rules. Uh, there's the data validation rules themselves. Um, um, yeah, so uh, there's a lot to, to, to work with when you're trying to prepare your data and then make sure your data is complete as possible. And then, like I said, uh, with form additions, you know, uh, no telling what the, the pipeline is for the next UDS, but uh, with the uh, Spanish version of the UDS, uh, when it came out a few months ago, I know that, um, you know, we worked with uh, Suzanne Hunt at, uh, at Kansas uh, ADC uh, to you know, write that um, write that form set up into a red cap so that we could use it in our electronic data capture system for for red cap. Um, I think that's probably a good point to say. I want to go on record thanking uh, uh, Susan Hunt at Kansas. Um, she coordinated efforts uh, for uh, UC Irvine, uh, for Wisconsin, University of Boston, uh, and. Um, uh, Washington at uh, St. Louis and um, for building out the REDCap UDS3 in REDCap. And uh, I know that we use it here at Florida and Nicholas, I believe you use the same um, data dictionary for your REDCap, correct? Correct, that's right. Yeah, so I always want to say thank you to Suzanne, uh, big help in that effort. Uh, saved a lot of, of you know, coding um, REDCap forms for us. So, um, so let's talk about the software. So Naculator, simply put, is a translator from a comma-separated values file to a fixed width format. It just transforms um, CSV into fixed width. And I'll show you how that data looks here in a few moments. Um, you don't necessarily have to be, uh, your data doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to come from REDCap. Uh, as long as you have a CSV file that has the same column headers that match the variable names exactly to the data element dictionary, um, you should be able to use Naculator to take your CSV file and put it to the fixed width format. Uh, it's written in Python, uh, Python programming language. Uh, Python's a nice uh, general language, uh, really good at data manipulation. Um, uh, just a little bit of trivia, um, Python was developed literally in December of 1989, was one of the first iterations, and the creator of Python was a huge fan of Monty Python. And so uh, that's where Python derives its uh, name from, it's called from Monty Python for any fans out there for that old uh, British comedy. Um, so it's available or you can find it at, uh, you know, on GitHub. It's an open source software, it has an open source license and it's available at that URL. Um, this slide here, or this portion here is talking, or kind of your first look at the code itself. So. In Naculator, we have all of the form definitions built out using the rules from the Data Element Dictionary. So, for any of you that are working with a CSV file or SAS, you're going to you, you know you're going to find the the fields packet form ID, the ADC ID, the patient ID, the visit month, day, year. Uh, these should all be very familiar with you uh, as folks that work with the data. Uh, this is directly from the Data Element Dictionary. Uh, we define these fields, we give it a type, which comes to the data element dictionary. So this is only a number, these are only characters. And then uh, we define what position they should be in uh, for the fixed width file that goes to NAC. Um, and so I'll show a little bit more code uh, in a moment, but this is one portion where we have a, uh, a forms uh, file in Naculator code that defines out all the forms. So this is the, um, a header form that we created uh, in REDCap, and um, this is the definition for it in code. Um, 
there is no uh, I in team, as, it, as the saying goes. And so um, I want to take a moment to give credit to the authors that have worked on Naculator over the last uh, four years. Uh, this is a mixture of uh, software developers and graduate students that have come through uh, our work at CTSI. And naturally, uh, Nicholas has been a contributor to the software as well. And so these are uh, some of the folks that have worked on the software over time. Another way to read more about Naculator is on the oneflorida80rc.org website. Uh, this URL here uh, can be found under the Four Scientists section on our uh, oneflorida80rc.org website. Uh, again, just a little bit of you know, what it is, why you should use it, and, and where can you get it, and um, points you to, uh, ultimately points you to GitHub, but that's another way to find out more about it on our website. Here's another look at the code itself uh, with a little bit uh, wider view. So again, uh, we have a class here defined as form A1 and these uh, set fields here are all of the fields, variable names that are available on the form A1. Um, and so again, we have the type of field that it is, either a number or a character field, what position uh, it should occupy in the fixed width, how long it should be what the inclusive range should be for the, um, for the field, and what are the allowable values. Again, this is all coming from the Dale Element Dictionary. And so, um, you know, although Naculator does not run the error checks and the alert checks that we're used to seeing when we do, uh, you know, inform checks or cross form checks or cross visit checks, but this, is, this helps you clean or prepare your data make sure that it's uh, in proper format before it goes. So like uh, probably one of the classic problems that we see when we run Naculator every Friday is that in the free form field, um, sometimes they could be over 60 characters. And so uh, Naculator can catch that error and we go back and work with our clinician to um, you know try to use abbreviations for some medical conditions and don't stall them out entirely because there's a 60 character range on some of the fields. I think on uh, B9 and um, D1, I think has those restrictions. So that's just an example of, of how Naculator can apply um, the data element dictionary rules on your data as you're, as you're working on it. So um, Naculator features, there are some switches with it. And actually with any program, there's a help file that, that um, speaks briefly about how it gives you examples how to use it and what switches are available. So one of the switches are uh, is the follow-up visit switch, the FVP switch. So when you run the command from uh, the command line, you um, may be processing an initial visit you know, packet for a run. So what, what we're doing is we're downloading data from REDCap and we want to run in all the initial visit packets. And then we might want to run in all, you know, run all the follow-up visit packets. So the software takes the CSV file, we run an initial visit packet run, and it outputs a data file that has nothing but initial visit packets in it that's ready to upload to NAC. And then we will do a follow visit packet run, and the input file comes in from REDCap. It's the same input file, but this time Naculator is filtering for the follow-up visit packet rules because it's a whole, um, the form definitions for IVP versus FVP are different on, on the UDS-3, even though they're both very similar, uh, Naculator has both of those form sets programmed into it and can enforce those form rules, the data element dictionary rules. And so that's just another filter that you use when you're running it. Um, Naculator also processes the, the simple, um, not simple, but the one form uh, for NeuroPath uh, packets as well. Um, I'll say that we are developing a um, milestone switch, uh, probably a dash M switch, where we'll be able to process milestones. Um, um, milestones at, at the first were such a simple form that we just were doing it by hand. But uh, uh, as, as the center you know, uh, it matures, we're entering more and more milestones because more and more things are happening uh, with our, our study participant population. So uh, we're building in the milestone definition into Naculator uh, for, for runs as well. Um, then uh, we get into the dash F switch, uh, which allows us to run filters. And I'll talk about that uh, right now. <laughs> so um, filters are very customizable. Um, 
you can create a filter in Python that will transform or filter the data before it's run into or run through the uh, inoculator program. So the clean patient ID, we have a process where we look at our subjects that are finalized in the NAC database. And we do two things. Um, one, we try to you know, lock those records in REDCap so they're not edited. But two, uh, if a subject has already been uploaded to NAC and cleared to, to the current database, and they're not in working database anymore, we exclude them from being re-uploaded uh, back to NAC. So we have a process where we run a filter, we download the uh, data from NAC that tells us uh, what people are or what, uh, you know, what cases are cleared and finalized with NAC. And then we just eliminate them from our, our upload. We don't, you know, NAC doesn't even, doesn't even consider uh, trying to format that data for upload. So that's the clean PTID uh, filter for us. Uh, it was just a process that we developed. That's, that's, that's how we kind of um, work on that. So the next filter is one that replaces drug IDs. Um, Suzanne Hunt actually spoke to this um, at the San Diego uh, Fall Data Core meeting, but REDCap only allows you to um, enter a value um, once. But in the case of the drug IDs, the form, you can have a drug ID represent, you know, you might have the word Tylenol, you might have the word acetaminophen, and it's the same thing, so the same number would apply. So uh, to work around that, um, Suzanne and the original builders of the original UDS worked with a red cap limitation where it couldn't take the same uh, drug ID multiple times. So what happens is, is we use Python uh, to replace and put in a letter D over top of a numbering system that's been developed to work around the limitation of red cap. So that's part of the replace drug IDs filter. Um, we had a couple of instances where the header file um, did not have the exact same name or variable name as found in the data element dictionary. So we have a few instances where we have Naculator run against the CSV file and correctly rename the, um, the variable name to the data element dictionary name. It was just, it got missed, you know, it's just fun working with data kind of thing, you know, just Sometimes these things happen, and so we created a filter. There's only about, I think, four columns or four fields that we have to um, rename the correct field, so that's why we use the fix headers filter. Um, we also have this fill default values, so um, this is customizable, customizable per center, but the only thing that we're using here is we fill in uh, our site number, 41, uh, for when we do our our data, we fill in a default of 41 for all of our cases because that's our site number. You, you can um, sometimes uh, the data entry operators at the clinical site don't always fill in the, um, the site ID number. And uh, since we've created this filter, REDCap actually has a, a feature to uh, create default values for certain fields on forms. So this this uh, um, filter is kind of almost coming to a stage where it can be deprecated, but uh, there's some cases on um, no GDS. What is the no GDS? I think that's, is that B4? I think it's B4. There is a um, option where uh, it expects the default that um, it's either a zero or a one. And uh, typically we always fill out the B4. And so if you don't if you don't fill out before, it's expecting a zero in that field, and uh, we can fill a default value there as well. So the filters, again, are created to uh, work with data issues that you know can be site-specific. And as you're using Naculator yourself, uh, you can create additional filters to solve you know, whatever uh, data issue that might arise. So um, and remove patient ID. Um, that... I'm blanking on that one. I'll, I'll moving on. Um, we have a new filter called Get PTID, Get Patient ID. Um, we can run Naculator on a single patient if we want. So say that we only want, so instead of doing a bulk, we, we download all the data from a cap and say that we only want to run one patient's data and that we're actively working with our clinic site. We're actively talking to them on the phone, 
they're actively entering, you know, uh, the D1 uh, uh, form data that just got uh, you know, cleared from the, uh, uh, the site, uh, site clinician. Um, we can, in that instance, um, specify the patient ID that we're after, uh, you know, and in that moment run an activator against that one case out of a bulk uh, uh, download from REDCap. So that's a newer feature that we just added. So that switches, that's filters, that's some of the functionality. Um, and again, the filters offer an opportunity to, uh, you know, be creative and try to solve, you know, data handling issues before it's going to NAC. So a little bit about how it works. Say that, um, you know, hey, I'm ready. I'm convinced I want to use an activator at my site. So um, one way, if you have a, a Python environment, either in Windows, Linux, or Mac, um, if you have Python installed, you can run the command pip install an activator, and that will install the, um, the program on your computer with the latest version that we have with an activator. Uh, another way, and probably what I would encourage you to do, is to actually clone the repository from GitHub. Uh, the command is right there as you see it. Uh, git clone uh, GitHub and then the, uh, the organization and the software repository. So that's how you pull the software down to your, your computer. Um, I'm going to throw this curl command in there. I know this is very, uh, we're getting more in the technical uh, weeds here. Uh, it took us a while to figure out this curl command because uh, Linux commands and syntax um, can be very specific. It's just kind of, it's just, <laughs> yeah, Linux is a powerful tool, but you have to know exactly how to use it, right? So it took us a while to figure out this curl command. So I'm throwing it out there for anybody else to see. So what we're doing to break this down is uh, with curl, we're saying it dash V, be verbose, tell me error messages that you encounter. Uh, the dash D is a, uh, um, a, deline a delineator where, uh, in this case, we're using the token. So RedCap has this concept where uh, you can generate API tokens. You can uh, have applications talk to the application program interface, the API for RedCap. And so you have to give it a token number, uh, which is a unique number for each uh, project. Uh, tell, you want to tell RedCap that I'm looking for content equals record. I want a format that is in CSV. I want a, a file type that is flat. And then this is the URL. Uh, in this case, this is our red cap uh, for our, our CTSI runs our red cap. So this is the URL for our uh, site. And then you want to output the file into a data.csv file. So instead of going into red cap, logging into the GUI, going to the report, clicking export, clicking the button to download, download the CSV, we just run a command that pulls the data down um, and then uh, the next step in the process is that uh, this next command here, um, we run the REDCap to NAC program, which is NACulator. Uh, in this example here, I have typed, we're using the dash IVP uh, switch. So we're doing an initial visit run. Uh, this symbol means, you know, give me the input file of data.csv and then we're outputting a data.txt. So uh, what's happening is the data.csv is being transformed into this fixed width text file. It could be a, you know, a .csv extension as well, but we just use a .txt um, extension there. Um, yeah. And then I think we probably, uh, most of us have seen, I would think have seen this page, but you know, this is where we go to, um, to upload the file. Um, yeah. So let me show you a uh, demonstration uh, on kind of, you know, this process in action. So I'm going to do the manual. This demonstration shows you the manual process. So uh, this example, this screen here is RedCap. And so um, we go to uh, the export data feature in RedCap. We choose CSV and then we hit export data. And then this gives you an Excel file that can be downloaded. So you click that, it downloads the file. So here, uh, the next step, we always want to look at the data. So here we're looking at our CSV file. So the column headers follow strictly from the data element dictionary. So this is patient ID 12345, you know, ADC ID 41, that's our site, the visit, and some of the example data here. This is all, you know, not, not real data, of course, but just example data. And so then I go to the command line and I'm running uh, red cap to NAC, I'm running Naculator. So here's the IVP test data.csv file. I want to output it in data.txt. Hitting enter here at some point. There's some errors here and there, but let's look at the data.txt file. 
So now a second ago, we showed you the CSV file. Now we see it in fixed width. So um, these positions, you know, the I is for IVP, the Z1 form, all of these uh, uh, positions in the columns uh, are according to the, um, the element dictionary, where, where, the, where the values go in the file. And then naturally we're going to NAC, choosing file upload. This is the data.txt we just ran, upload it. I fast forwarded that a little bit, but then um, uh, it you know gives you its initial yes, this is okay, no errors. Go ahead and upload, uh, and that's uh, that's the process so far. So that's um, a demonstration of the manual process of you know, going to download the, everything from RedCap, looking at the data. I, I didn't go through the filters in that example, but uh, that's kind of a general overview of how the process works. That's almost depending on the data being truly clean, where we didn't have to filter anything. But um, that's generally how the process works. Um, I will say that um, we have graduated to using Docker. Um, we spin up a Docker container that goes out and runs that curl command, pulls the data from Redcap, then runs the um, maculator initial visit packet. It runs the initial, uh, and then it runs the follow up, and uh, it can run the neuropath uh, packet against all that data. And then when it generates the file, um, <laughs> we use a Selenium process to where we use a test web driver that goes in, in and clicks the buttons on a web uh, driver and uploads the data for us. And then at the end, this uh, Docker then emails us with the results of the, uh, the upload, basically the file that got uploaded to NAC. And it does this every day at, at 6 a.m. Uh, so, um, it's for another conversation, but uh, I know that Brian Staley um, at NAC has been interested in talking about an API, and uh, I'll probably talk to him more about it at, um, at the fall ADC meeting. But uh, Selenium is not the way to, to upload the, the data, not, not, um, not reliable at least, or not, uh, um, it's not as good as an API. You need an API. So uh, I think that's in, the, in our futures. But for now, we use Selenium to accomplish the automated upload where it pulls the data, formats it, and then uploads it. So, um, so let's talk a bit about the collaboration. So um, open source software. Open source software is a bit of a philosophy. It's, it's, it's about, you know, it's an idea about being open, sharing. Um, you know, I think about open science uh, with this. Uh, you know, um, as someone who's working um, on a degree in, in educational technology. I think about open educational resources, you know, for when you open, uh, you know, instructionally designed courses for everyone to share, the same concept kind of comes through for software as well. So um, most everything that we work on is open source software. Uh, these are three examples of software titles that we have developed for um, our, our ADC. So um, I won't go into those. Those are the links that you can access those, but Naculator is among them. And then, you know, namely, um, I want to thank uh, uh, Hiroko Dodge, who really was the one that introduced our two centers. Uh, Hiroko is on the external advisory committee for the One Florida ADRC. So uh, for the first couple of years, uh, you know, we were meeting with her and talking with her. And as uh, the Michigan ADC, ADRC, sorry, was coming online, um, she introduced us to, uh, to Ari, um, Ari and Nicholas, and just over time, you know, we worked with Sherry Tabo and, and uh, um, Ari Bomek and Nicholas May, and it's just developed into a collaboration. So, um, you know, with Nicholas, we uh, we first met through Ari and Hiroko uh, in February of 2018 when he was hired on with the Michigan ADC. Um, yeah, Nicholas, do you yeah, want yeah, to just talk to yeah, just, um, you know, when I was on boarded in, uh, you know, the early last year, um, I came into this from a different field and so didn't know very much about, you know, what exactly the center's needs were, let alone, you know, what uh, sort of hot spots we were running into when it came to getting the data that we collected here at our center up to NAC efficiently um, so that, you know, we, you know, the, the data that we had collected aligned with NAC uh, as quickly as possible. 
Um, so yeah, Hiroko um, and Ari put me in touch with Kevin in the center there, um, you know, and t told me about Naculator and um, how it helped promise for our center because um, at the time what we were doing was entering the, uh, in, in order to sort of move as quickly as possible through all the data validation checks that um, the NAC um, server runs on the data, um, the process here was to, uh, you know, enter the data directly into NAC and then download it, uh, transform it a little bit, and then put it into our REDCap instance. And that's a little cart before the horse. Um, uh, we, you know, we wanted to flip that process and make sure that we were uh, verifying the data, you know, here locally and, um, you know, before pushing it up to, uh, to uh, the NAC server, um, partly just, you know, for the sake of um, improving the process here, but also because we were running into um, a, a scale problem. Uh, we were uh, growing as a center and uh, getting more and more visits. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I talked with Kevin and some of the developers, um, you know, got access to the software. It's not hard to find. It's on GitHub. And we started a discussion, um, and then I just started to um, try it out and uh, see, what, see what I could uh, do and see, to, to make it work. And um, the, I was running into um, uh, uh, some small issues uh, because I didn't know about the, uh, and Kevin touched on this, uh, the header filters, uh, like the f fixing some of the headers. Uh, but as soon as they pointed me to, you know, what filters to apply, um, I was able to, you know, get a, like a, you know, just clone the, pro the, the whole project from GitHub. Um, it did some light customizing, you know, right in the, uh, the command that Kevin showed you to, you know, change the headers that we had that were slightly different um, mm -hmm. and then run that over the, the data that we were exporting from RedCap. Um, and it, it worked, uh, which was, which was great. Uh, and, uh, to this day, all of the packets that we process, um, if they pass through Naculator, um, they pass through NAC, uh, NAC's uh, validation process, uh, which is you know, really helpful and speeds things up for us because what we've been able to do is um, embed Naculator in our own you know, uh, custom pipeline that allows us to catch and correct uh, errors uh, much more effectively than we would have in the past. And Naculator is doing that, you know, the heavy lifting of that, uh, you know, uh, processing and then also like catching the errors that uh, would be difficult to find otherwise, or not difficult, but very slow to find mm. um, otherwise. So um, th that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, and, and that's the real benefit is that it's able, it helps us um, catch those. And it, it allows us to, it's that critical piece in the middle that allows us to automate um, uh, everything except for the part where we are uh, cross-checking the records that are already in NAC. Um, yeah, again, as Kevin mentioned, because there's no API available to uh, download data from uh, the NAC server um, and you, uh, reference what we have internally against what's already uh, in the current database at NAC. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have to manually download that and then everything is automated through uh, you know like here locally and then when it comes to pushing back up to NAC um, that's the that's where it is sort of de-automated uh, we're not using the um, the docker container that um, Kevin mentioned we we like to uh, sit and take a look at what we've got before we push it up so happy to share that though, Nicholas I know we haven't talked yeah. about yeah. happy to share that <laughs> yeah, thanks so much yeah yeah so um you know, Nicholas and I tried to talk uh, at least quarterly every few months, uh, you know, as he's, you know, most recently we were both needing um, the Z1X form built out because what uh, that was, yeah, April of 2018. Um, we were using uh, the temporary Spanish module in C1S before the C2 uh, uh, module got converted. Um, so we were using C1S. We had a form definition for C1S. However, uh, the Michigan ADC uh, does not have um, Spanish speakers, uh, I don't think still as of yet. So, um, you know, we, he pulled that uh, form definition that needed. So he pulled that out because we had developed a way to detect if the C1S was in the data set. We had a way to detect if the C2 for English speakers or the C1S for um, Spanish speakers was being used 
uh, in the data set, but Nicholas didn't need that feature. So, you know, he, he had, uh, he knew enough when we talked about pulling that out for his process to kind of customize an accolator a bit for his site process. But, um, um, you know, that dialogue, that back and forth, uh, you know, the talking through Zoom sessions occasionally, and then uh, also interacting on uh, GitHub as a way to uh, collaborate our efforts uh, on the software has been very, very helpful, you know, very helpful. So, you know, having it uh, open source, having an open source license, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about uh, licensing, you know, his contributions uh, come into the software code base and, you know, he's, uh, you know, added to, as an author for the author file and uh, it, it's, that's how it works. So, you know, uh, it, we're a community of two now, but uh, welcome to support and, and, you know, have anyone else come into the community that's interested in just trying it out and testing it. So uh, to date, um, Nicholas and I are both sites using Naculator, we've roughly uh, approximately ran about 1,200 visit packets. That's including Neuropath initial visit and follow-up visit packets. Um, so for the past you know four years or so, between two sites, about 1,200 packets for us have been cleared successfully uh, to the NAC database. Anything else, uh, Nicholas? Yeah, I, I would like to, yeah, on, on, the, uh, on the collaboration end, um, I'd just like to note that it's, um, it's been a real pleasure working with your team. Um, anytime I, you know, have got to a point where it's like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm scratching my head on this and I don't have the resources to spend a bunch of time, you know, like uh, figuring it out. Like your team's always been really responsive, responsive and uh, we, you know, usually figure the problem out that afternoon. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate open source software generally, uh, and this project being open source um, does make it nice to, uh, and easy to, you know, either contribute code, you know, I haven't gone the pull request route, um, mm -hmm. I've just uh, uh, filed issues on GitHub because right. they're sm small minor fixes. Um, but that, that does uh, make things uh, much, uh, much easier. And yeah, it, it sort of cultivates a, um, a, a collaborative environment to develop this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Nicholas, and it's been a pleasure to work with you as well. So that segues perfectly into, you know, spending time talking about GitHub. Um, you know, uh, GitHub is not the only home <laughs> for open source software or, you know, closed source software, but uh, it's probably the largest and most popular. There's also uh, Bitbucket and um, I can't think of the other one right now, the more, one of the more prominent ones, but I can't think of it right now. But GitHub is... I think by far the largest um, uh, um, hub for uh, you know software development support and processes. They they are wildly popular. So much so that Microsoft bought them. I think about a year, year and a half ago. Um, so if you don't have a GitHub account, I encourage you to get a GitHub account. Uh, technically, you can go to that URL for where Naculator is located and download it in a zip file, and you don't have to have a uh, GitHub account at all. But um, I encourage you to get one uh, because there's features in GitHub um, that allow you to kind of keep track of, of software. So uh, one of the features is that you can watch a repository. And so uh, what watching a repository in GitHub allows you to do um, is to, um, you know, you get notified when there's pull requests. You get notified when someone uh, you know, creates an issue for my development team or for Nicholas um, you get notified of these activities through email. It emails your GitHub account address and says, hey, you know, this, this repository you're watching is, is getting some activity. You might want to check it out. Um, you can also star the repository. These, uh, when you go to GitHub and the, um, on Maculator up in the upper right hand corner, these features, you'll see them. Uh, you can watch something, you can star something, uh, or you can clone something. But um, starring something uh, allows you to um, uh, view that repository on your profile screen in GitHub as soon as you log in. And it's also kind of a way, uh, if you want to equate it to a Facebook like, you sort of can. Uh, if you want to start a, a repository, you can. It gets, uh, um, allows you to kind of keep track of the project over time. And then there's also this term called forking where you're creating a fork of the repository or a copy of the repository into your GitHub account. That gets a little bit more into the technical weeds about, you know, um, you know, development, software development. Uh, but if you were to use Naculator, um, you could fork it into your repository on GitHub, clone it down, and then uh, make edits to the software, make improvements or changes, and then you could create pull requests back to us as code moderators. 
and um, we would review the code and we could possibly contribute it to the code base. Uh, so uh, another interaction or another way that GitHub supports collaboration is this issues uh, idea. There's an issues tab and uh, it allows you to submit uh, problems with the code or errors that you found while using the software. Uh, I mean, is as iterative as the software development process is, um, you know, we might not code for every circumstance or, or situation, so we might miss something, and so there might be an issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, and then naturally, there's pull requests. Like, you know, uh, pull request is when you've gone so far as you've you've pulled the software down, you've used it, you found an error, you fixed it, and you're ready to contribute to the code base. So that's kind of the full cycle is a is a pull request. So that's kind of uh, th these are the tools available in GitHub, and this is why we use it to, to support uh, the collaboration relationship between Nicholas and I, and then uh, also it enables anyone else in the community to, uh, to use the software. Um, one last point, um, you know, open source software, uh, you know, uh, gives us the opportunity to think in, 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 from an academic perspective, it's, uh, you know, software is a citable work. Uh, you know, as the ADRC has funded our efforts as a team of developers uh, in the data core, um, we make use of Zenodo. And so um, Naculator has a DOI. Uh, when we write our papers, we are referencing um, this uh, software. And, you know, that's uh, an example of a, uh, it's not quite APA, but um, that's an example of the uh, citation formatted for um, the software for Naculator. And so, uh, Zenodo itself, if you go to the website, um, you can integrate Zenodo with your GitHub account that monitors your uh, software packages. And as you do make new releases of versions, it can automatically update the DOI with the new version of the software. And then, like I said, in your papers that you publish, um, you know, you can use, you can cite it, it's citable. Uh, so, um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, let me, I know there's some questions that came through, so let me look at those uh, real quick. That's a lot of questions. Okay, great. <laughs> let me, um, can you also be, so can you also upload a CSV without fixed position? Um, the answer today is, is no. Um, this is strictly designed to use a fixed position. So uh, right now the software doesn't have the ability. I mean, I, I guess um, it could be coded to do that, but today it does not. That's just simply the answer. Um, I'll, so someone's asking for the GitHub link. I'll um, place that in here real quick. Okay, there's a link to Naculator. Oh, someone already did it. Thank you, Karen. Um, let's see. Our clinician has always overlaid the text fields, especially VA. Oh, I see. So those are some of the uh, um, experiences that you had while working with the data. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. That's the number one error for us <laughs> that, that Naculator catches. There's too many, too many characters in this field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, um, it overload the text field. Yeah, the same for us, and yeah, that's what that's one of the features that we like. So, uh, is that uh, neuropathology form version ten? It is. That's what we have uh, built out in Naculator. the form version ten. Uh, suppose I use RedCap uh, form that contains form A one, then some questions unique to our center, and finally form A two. Can Naculator deal with the CSV that I have exported? and contains the data mentioned? Yes, absolutely. So um, that's a great question. So one of the reasons why we use REDCap is you know, predominantly non-NAC data, non-NAC forms. We have, um, we have neuropsychologists that have um, you know, batteries that they want to test uh, um, you know, or, or utilize you know, with this, with this uh, study population. And so we have a number of non-NAC forms. And when we do our data export, uh, the way we have it done with our APIs, we download absolutely everything that includes, you know, every possible iteration of the IVP, the FVP, the neuropath, uh, the milestone, and, but then it's also, you know, the apathy scale. It's the, um, um, I think the MOCA is on uh, C2, but also, um, uh, it's, it's lost, I'm gone, I can't remember. There's multiple scales that we use here that are not uh, useful to NAC, and when we download it all, it comes in, 
uh, to a single CSV inoculator looks into there and it's only looking for the uh, values that are defined for the forms from the data element dictionary. So it readily pulls them out and just skips all the non-NAC items. So that's the answer to um, Suzanne's uh, question. Hi, Suzanne. Um, Will, let's see. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Will. Yeah, it's uh, it's B6, not B4. I think I said B4 earlier on the GDS, uh, but like I said, that filter for to fill the default helps. Um, no cross visitor cross. No, um, it's not really something that's in the data element dictionary. So uh, Naculator does not get into the cross visit or cross form checks. You know, um, I don't see why we couldn't code some of that in there, but um, it, right now today, the answer is basically no, it doesn't do any cross visit, cross form checks. When we get to the NAC website, that's when we're starting to run those checks and trying to address those errors with our clinical site. So again, our process is to, um, every Friday we have a call with our clinic site and work through those errors for correction. And that's um, one thing that um, that we, you know, when I mentioned sort of like our pipeline, um, that's one thing that we wrap around uh, Naculator is, you know, some checks to uh, compare what visits are there and um, whether or not they're in good shape before it is passed into Naculator. Um, so are you using R to do that, Nicholas? Uh, <laughs> so right now it's it's glued together with Bash R and Python. But yeah, we should, hey, that's a great that's a, that's a great company to be in Bash R and Python. That's uh, right. That's a, that's a data pipeline right there. I tell you. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, yeah, Docker simplifies some processes. It does. Um, again, I debated about talking about Selenium in this call, but. Um, uh, one could argue that you should not use it, but uh, um, again, it fills a, a gap that we have right this moment. And, and uh, knowing that, you know, every day at 6 a.m., the data is uploaded to NAC to go into the working database for us to start working on uh, the next day. Uh, um, it's just one less thing for us to, to, to worry about. Um, so in visit, neither does EWDRC. Let me see how this one so far. Yeah, no, it doesn't uh, do the in the in visit cross form checks. I mean, it's it, again the error checks are mainly coming from um, the data element dictionary. But again, there's no reason why we couldn't develop either what Nicholas has done uh, with R and Bash, but also using filters and Naculator could be added. Again, uh, that's one of the reasons why we made it open source. If you want to collaborate with us. Uh, we could, you know, have uh, these calls and talk about that, that sort of uh, feature set. Um, are there any imp impediments that would, uh, you know, of to upgrading the code to run in Python 3? <laughs> yeah, you caught us. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's on our to-do list. It isn't written in Python 2 right now, uh, and um, we have it on one of on one of many to-do lists. We have it to convert it to Python 3. So. Um, uh, I will say it as uh, thank you for bringing that up and be glad to work with you on that. <laughs> um, let's see, GitHub can host your website without spending money to use. And I can. Yes, agreed. Um, let's see, we actually raw input the full V8 worksheet and data enter into our system, but only upload the V8 form, final form, um, Mocha, Mint, et cetera. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you, Will. And then see, one method is to code forms to present other form responses that may inform them. B9, C2, do you want to? Yes, uh, I completely agree, Will. Yes, agree. Uh, let's see, uh, Suzanne had another question, I think. Are you working on incorporating telephone visits in Naculator? Yeah, Suzanne, that's a great question. Um, I'll say it's on lower down, the, lower down on the uh, to-do list, but um, if, you have a strong need for the tele telephone visit packet. Uh, we would love to work with you on that and, and start building that out. Uh, I completely agree that we do need the telephone um, visit packets uh, defined in uh, Naculator before you could use it. So um, it's something to do. It's work to be done. Um, yeah. So I think that's all the the questions from everyone. Um, What's this last um, one? Well, one yeah. Our telephone pack is treated as a version of FP. Yeah, no, it just the telephone um, 
No, to me, it would be another switch. We would have to add another switch to handle the uh, telephone visit packet. Uh, it's not like a version of FVP. Um, yeah, so usually you're filling out a milestone for someone that has uh, minimal contact and then switching to telephone visit packet. And so, um, yeah, currently our site does not do uh, frontotemporal lobe disorder or the Lewy body uh, packets. Uh, so those packets are not built out into it. But again, uh, it's open source, it's, it's collaboration, it's community. Uh, we would love to work with you on getting those uh, built out. We could totally do that. So um, uh, if there's interest, we could, we could work to that. Um, uh, with that said, I'll say that I'm also going to be uh, at the fall ADC meeting in St. Louis, uh, having probably a similar talk about, um, about Naculator. So uh, you know, just trying to, again, uh, extol the virtues of Maculator and, and its feature set and everything. So uh, um, if you're going to, if anyone on this call is going to be there, uh, love to catch up in St. Louis and talk further about this. But in the meantime, please email me at kshanson at ufl.edu and, um, uh, you know, go on GitHub, you know, uh, fork the software, star the software, pull it down, uh, you know, look at it. And um, if the telephone visit and the FTLD and Lewy body uh, packets uh, are of high interest. Um, we could we could work with you on that. Yeah, sorry, I've been talking quite a bit there, but uh, thank you everyone for your time. I think that's uh, all the questions that I see. And uh, again, I want to thank Mark and um, Maggie and uh, Elizabeth at NAC, and uh, I think Nicholas for his con uh, you know continued collaboration and, and totally looking for more collaborators. Any other questions? Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah, you bet. Any closing thoughts, Mark? I think you're muted there, Mark. Yeah, yeah, you might be muted. You're still muted, Helen. Hold on. I don't see a way to unmute you, Mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, again, I just want to thank everybody for their time. I appreciate it. Um, looking forward to seeing you again and uh, some of you in St. Louis in October. And uh, if you have any questions, please email Nicholas or I and we'll uh, get back. Kevin, I, I had muted myself. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, no um, I, I just wanted to say uh, anybody on the, on the uh, webinar here, if there are topics that you'd like to propose and, and present, um, we'll probably have some more webinars this next uh, coming year. And so I'll be thinking about that. So again, thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Nicholas. And, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your time today.